Hello students, welcome to today's class. In the previous chapter Force and Types of Force, we see what is force, effects of force and types of force. In today's class we will see the next chapter, Work and Energy. At the end of this topic, you will be able to understand. In the previous chapter, we see force is a push or a pull which tries to change or changes the state of rest of a body. In the first example, you can see a boy is pushing the car. It means the boy is trying to change the state of rest of the car. In the second example, a girl is pulling her trolley bag. It means she is actually changing the state of motion of the trolley bag every time. We see that as the girl pulls the trolley bag, the position of the trolley bag changes every time. From this, we can say that the trolley bag is displaced. From this we will define work. When an object is displaced by applying a force on it, work is said to be done. Suppose, Rhea has two boxes, loaded with 20 and 30 books respectively. She wants to place these boxes into another room, so she tied the strings to the boxes and pulled them one by one from a certain distance of 2 meters along a straight line. After which box she feels more work was done. We know that to pull, push and lift the greater weights, we apply greater force. Here, we see that Rhea applied more force when she pulled the box with 30 books for the same displacement. From this, we can say that more work is done for the same displacement when more force is applied to perform the work. And if the same force is applied for more displacement, more work is done by the force. Now, we will see. How work and energy are related to each other. Suppose, Ram and his friend Raghu both are practicing for a marathon race on the playground. Raghu completes 20 rounds of the playground, and Ram completes 25 rounds. What do you think, who does the more work? Here, we see Ram completes 25 rounds of the playground. It means he covers more distance than Raghu. Also, to complete 5 extra rounds, Ram used more energy than Raghu. Hence, we can say that Ram does more work than Raghu. From this, we can also define energy. The capacity to do work is called energy. We see the capacity to do work is called energy. But, do we use only one form of energy for every work? No. For every work we use a different form of energy. So let's see what are the different forms of energy. The first form of energy is mechanical energy. The energy used for doing mechanical work is called mechanical energy. For example, jumping from the hurdle while running is an example of mechanical energy. The mechanical energy is of two types, one is potential energy and second is kinetic energy. Let's see one by one what is potential energy and kinetic energy. Potential energy, suppose a bucket is lying on the ground. It has no energy, so it cannot do any work. But what happens if we lift the bucket to a certain height and placed it on a wall? Can the bucket do work? The answer is yes. When we lift the bucket from the ground by applying the force, displacement of the bucket takes place. As a result, the bucket does the work and energy is stored in the form of potential energy. From this, we can define potential energy. The energy which is stored in an object due to a specific state or position of that object is called potential energy. Suppose two balls red and green are placed on the table. 
the red ball is at the center of the table and the green ball is at one side of the table. What happens if we push the green ball so that it hits the red ball? From where did the green ball get the energy to set the red ball in motion? When we apply a pushing force on the green ball, we give energy to it and set it in the motion. When the green ball hits the red ball, it transfers its energy to the red ball. As a result, the red ball also sets in the motion. From this we can define kinetic energy. The energy obtained from motion is called kinetic energy. In winter, when we feel cold, we sit near the fire or in the sunlight. Also, in the kitchen, your mother cooks food on gas or stove. If you observe all these processes, you can see we require heat energy for various purposes in daily life. But where from we get the heat? The earth receives heat in proper quantities from the sun. Or we get the heat by burning fuel like LPG gas, petrol wood etc. Now, we will see light energy. We know plant produces their food in the sunlight. It means that plants convert light energy into energy in food. And the animals use the plant leaves as food and get the energy to perform their work. From this, we can say that light is a form of energy. Now, we will see sound energy. Do you know how do we hear each other while talking? We can hear each other with the help of sound energy. Where we use sound energy? We use sound energy while listening to the radio and watching television. From this, we can say that sound is a form of energy. Now we will see chemical energy. Do you know how do we get energy for our body? Our body gets chemical energy through food. Also petrol, gas, wood and coal all of them have chemical energy into them. Chemical energy exists in the cars, torchlights and in the radio batteries which gives us electrical energy or sound energy. From this, we define chemical energy. The energy obtained through chemical action is called chemical energy. Here are some appliances which we use in our daily life like the fan, lamp, mixer, TV, radio, fridge, washing machine, clothes iron. Can you tell in which form is the energy supplied to them to make them work? A very well known and necessary form of energy is electrical energy. Lamps, a fan and all the other appliances are run by electricity. These appliances convert electrical energy into light energy, sound energy, mechanical energy and heat energy. This energy can be transmitted from one place to another with the help of a wire. In the next video, we will learn about transformation of energy and energy resources.